I am very passionate about this topic, uh, but I'd like to actually kind of give you the genesis of how I got into Bitcoin and blockchain to begin with. So my day-to-day -day job is to look after FX and metals research and product development, which gives me the great privilege of being able to research a lot of my days. Um, so I explore, I go find out about things. And a couple years ago, I ran across Bitcoin and people were talking about cryptocurrencies and I thought, well, what is that? That's interesting. So I started digging on the internet, started talking to people. I'm based in London, but I'm often in New York. I'm from New York originally. So I started talking to people on the street, found out there was actually a Bitcoin center in New York. So I went to it one night. It turned out it was actually like a pit for trading Bitcoin, literally guys in jackets trading Bitcoin. But it was very odd because they were using pieces of paper to uh, do the trades and then their phones to actually transact. Um, the, the, the real interesting thing to me about it was it was attracting not only technologists, but it was attracting, and, and the young, but it was also attracting um, older people, people from different socioeconomic backgrounds. And I was thinking to myself, what is special about this thing called Bitcoin? Okay, so for those of you who are not familiar, how many of you actually own Bitcoin? I always like to do this uh, survey. How many actually have any, have a wallet, Bitcoin? Okay, I'm glad to hear that because now I can try to convince you otherwise to maybe delve into this. Bitcoin launched in 2009. It's a decentralized digital currency that enables instant payments to anyone, anywhere in the world. Just think about that. If you had a friend who went out around the world, let's say somewhere to Australia, and got into a bit of trouble and needed money, how would you send that money? How would you send sterling and convert it into Aussie dollar? It's not that easy, actually. You probably have to go find someone who would be able to wire it. They'd have to wait a few days. There's a whole, and, and there's a cost involved, significant cost in some cases. Well, imagine a world where you could just do it on your phone. And if, as long as you had Bitcoin, that person had a Bitcoin wallet, you could just send it. Bitcoin uses peer-to-peer -peer technology, which I'm not going to get into technicalities of it. In, in the minutes that I have, I mean, I can talk about this for hours, but in the minutes that I have, um, I, I would suggest that you actually go do some digging yourself if you, if you become interested in the space. Um, it has no central authority, and that's the bit that I find fascinating. Imagine a world where you can actually send money to each other without a bank, without a CCP or a, a clearinghouse. You don't need an intermediary. What does that mean? Like, to me, that's mind-boggling, because I started my career in a world where, in financial services, where you always need a trusted third party, because you don't trust the other side, necessarily. Um, so this is a very, very unique proposition. And for me, I find that whenever you talk about money, people feel very passionate about it, because either whether it's your own money, or someone else's money, or an institution's money, money tends to um, become very emotive for, for, for most people. People don't like to lose money, right? People don't like to uh, risk money unless, unless they know what they're getting into. So here, I feel like the technology and money coming together in this time, it's going to be a very interesting few decades. Um, Bitcoin is fast, cheap, and irreversible by design. Um, for those of you who want to know a little bit more about that, I suggest you research it. Blockchain itself is the shared public ledger on which the entire Bitcoin ne network operates. So it started off that way. Um, blockchain now is used in many different other terminology. The terminology gets very confusing very quickly because blockchain is often referred to in the private ledger space as well as alternative technologies that are not necessarily blockchain itself. But for our purposes here, let's just use the generic term blockchain. I'm gonna talk to you a little bit about the nascent world of digital currencies because I think we're just at the beginning. Bitcoin itself is about 3.7, give or take 3.8 billion dollar equivalent in market cap right now. It's the largest by far compared to the other digital currencies that are out there. But there's a whole bunch. I mean, if you wanted to, you could create your own coin. You know, John coin, Jack coin, doesn't matter. It's very easy to do actually if you do a little digging. Um, the interesting thing about Bitcoin, it is the one that people have traded um, the most. It does have a trading community. Uh, there's a London community here that's very tight. It's actually a very small network of traders and people who are advocates in Bitcoin. If you are interested, there, if you go to meetup groups, there's tons of meetup groups where you can get involved. And it's, it's interesting. I've only been looking at the space for about two years, 
But I'll tell you, I've gotten to know a lot of the players in the space, and it's a very, very close-knit community. And as David was talking about community, well, this is a new financial community that's coming up the ranks. Um, just one more thing, other thing about Bitcoin. Um, 3.8 billion might sound like a lot to you in terms of market, pa market cap, but just consider the FX markets. The FX markets are about $5.3 trillion a day. So as an FX person, when I look at Bitcoin, it's nice, but it's certainly very small compared to the actual foreign exchange markets. Bitcoin's price has also been very volatile. I've just given you the last two quarters. It's moved around from about 250 US dollars. Uh, it's actually back up where it was, but it's moved lower. You know, you've got to have fairly decent tolerance for that kind of volatility. Um, for those who started from the beginning, I actually have a friend who took um, a good deal of his personal savings and stuck it into Bitcoin when it was about a dollar and then rode it all the way up to 1,200. So you can imagine he's doing all right for himself right now. Um, but most people wouldn't, wouldn't have the stomach to be able to do that. Um, and it continues to move around a bit depending on news flow. Uh, people often ask the question, what is it grounded in? Like, wha what do people trade Bitcoin against? It's, it's against the US dollar, but, but how do you do fundamental analysis on it? Well, that's a good question. That's a question a lot of people are asking, which is, does it trade like FX or does it trade like gold? And, and that's a big debate, whether it's actually a currency or actually it has the characteristics of a commodity like gold. I would actually argue it's its own category. It's actually a hybrid. But I think that remains to be debated. And who is getting into Bitcoin and blockchain? Well, a lot of people have woken up to it now. The amount of venture capital money and Wall Street interest, uh, you can just open up the paper any on any given day and you'll probably find at least one reference to blockchain and Bitcoin. And why are people excited? Because these are some of the brightest minds on Wall Street or in the industry, right? So why, why do people care about this so much? What is, it ab what is it about it that has so much potential? Well, some people liken it to the internet, the advent of the internet. I don't know if that's gonna be the case, but there's something there. And what I think is really exciting about it is we're just at the beginning. The next 10 to 20 years in the financial services space, I think we're gonna see things we haven't even dreamt of yet. And that means digitized assets, digital assets, um, the way in which we do post-trade clearing, um, the way we settle, the way we report. I, it might be surprising to some of you who you know, aren't as familiar with how post-trade operates. I know when I first got into tr um, trading and, and structuring, I certainly didn't think too much about post-trade or how things got settled. But actually, that's really important. People want to get their assets or their payments at the end of the day. And how that operates and how that's done and whether it's a two-day two time lag or an instant um, settlement, it's actually a big deal. And so I think what we're gonna see over the next couple years is more money coming into this. We're gonna see more startups getting involved. And you know, as in any nascent industry or nascent um, technology that's emerging, there are going to be a number of failures. There are going to be a number of initiatives that don't work out. But maybe, who knows, they'll be the equivalent of the next Google one day, the blockchain Google. Um, and so I think you've got some of these companies here who are at this point getting lots of money and um, have kind of what I would call the leading edge versus other startups at the moment. And some of the names you may or may not have heard of. And just for full disclosure, CME Ventures, which is our venture capital arm of CME Group, has invested in uh, Ripple Labs, and that's public. And just to give you just a quick pictorial, there's lots of different segments even within the Bitcoin segments, uh, sorry, industry, where you've got exchanges, people trying to be exchanges in Bitcoin and digital assets. You've got people who are trying to do the mining bit. People are trying to do payment processing. There's a whole world of opportunity. And when I look at something like that, I think, wow, there's so much greenfield. Uh, there's just opportunity here. And if you are at all interested or you're not even sure how you want to get into financial services, I would say do some research, go find out, talk to people, connect with the community, and get yourself stuck in because I've only do it, been doing this for about two and a half years, and I'm considered one of the experts at the firm regarding the space. So it just goes to show you, it's rapidly evolving. Great, thank you.